The majority of lawmakers in New York's legislature actually support a bill that would change its healthcare system to a single payer healthcare system. It's very similar to what the bill in California in 2017 was attempting to do. Since we can't get single payer on a national level, California in 2017 thought, why don't we do it statewide? That effort failed and now unfortunately it looks like this effort in New York State is set to fail as well. Not because the lawmakers are against it, but because there are two different groups of people actively fighting against it and preventing Democratic leadership in the state from even allowing a vote on it. So the bill known as the New York Health Act has passed the state assembly five times before. This year, the legislative session is coming to a close with the New York Health Act stuck in committee, not even having received a vote in the assembly. So why is that? What's going on? Well, as the Daily Poster reports, advocates say that under pressure from both insurance corporations and yes, labor unions, New York legislative leaders are not planning to hold an up or down vote on the measure before the legislative session ends on Thursday. So again, it's a popular bill among voters in New York. The state legislature overwhelmingly supports it, it would easily pass. But it's being held up in committee by Democratic leadership in that state as a result of private health care interests and labor unions, which Cenk, take it away. <laughs> yeah, so look, again, this requires nuance. Unions are wonderful on so many different things. And when they take on big corporations and they organize, you get collective bargaining, which you desperately need, okay? Uh, on the other hand, recently in America, for whatever reason, uh, and I'm gonna explain one of the reasons for you in this context. Um, unions have supported uh, pro corporate positions. And that is maddening, maddening. And I guess in a country that is has runaway crony capitalism, maybe it's not that surprising. So, and, and Glenn Greenwald, I disagree with a lot of what he says recently. But half of what he says is still very good and, and especially references to his old work. And he had this theory on rotating villains on Democrats, which I agreed with and wrote about over a decade ago, okay? And now unions are beginning to do rotating villains. So in one state, we'll have the SEIU oppose single payer healthcare. And now in New York, they're the good guys and they're helping with single payer healthcare. Well, when they're the good guys, I'm super happy to have them, great, right? By the way, there's one union that's always been the good guys, it's the nurses union. They've mm -hmm. been wonderful on this issue, the best fighters on this issue. But here we are in New York. Oh, we picked a different union. Now, this time, the teachers. It's, it's yeah, the United Federation of Teachers. Yeah, uh, I want to be specific. Thank you, Amy. Yes. United Federation of Teachers, because do not lump everybody together. Do not lump all unions together, etc. Okay, but in this case, they are actively fighting against single payer health care, and it is swinging the balance because the Democrats have complete control in New York. Yeah, golly gee, they can't pass anything. And on this one, just like in California, in California they had a super majority. And how do they prevent? And Wolfpack has gone through this a hundred times on the issue of money and politics. And yes, it's almost always the Democrats now that block progress. And that doesn't let the Republicans off the hook. They're usually the bad guys as well, if not more. But it is Democrat, democratically controlled states like New York and California where they can just pass anything they want and they choose not to. And the way that they do that is they go, well, we all agree except, oh, golly gee, there's just one person in a, but he controls such an important committee and he won't let it out of committee. Oh well, golly gee, he made it out of committee and everybody voted yes, but the assembly leader in California won't put it up for a vote. And on the issue of money and politics, constantly they won't put it up for a vote. Because if they put it up for a vote, then they're gonna have to say, oh yeah, I was lying the whole time. I actually serve my donors, I don't serve you at all. Eric Olson was a local progressive candidate in California, had the best quote on this. He said, we have a super majority, who are we negotiating with? We're not negotiating with the Republicans, we're negotiating with our donors. That is exactly right. And in this case, why they, why would the unions be against healthcare for everybody? Well, there's a very good reason why. They claim, their, their claims are already terrible, but there's actually another reason. Uh, they claim, well, we already negotiated good rates for our uh, union members, so we don't want anybody else to have it. Oh, God. So let How me, can let you me say be, that. Let me be more specific because um, that's. Not quite their argument, yeah. what they are arguing, and I, I don't think it's a good argument, is that they negotiated 
health care plans on behalf of their workers and that required maybe sacrificing wages to ensure that. So, but here's the thing, so in the case of the New York City Municipal Labor Committee, right? This is the labor committee that's fighting aggressively against this effort to provide single payer health care. They're essentially saying, look, we're against this unless the bill is written in such a way that there are carve outs for our workers. So just understand that for a second. They're actually working against their workers in this scenario because you would have a single payer healthcare system free at the point of service. You don't have to worry about deductibles, you don't have to worry about co-pays, you don't have to worry about premiums, okay? They want to ensure that their workers wouldn't get to benefit from that single payer healthcare system and would have to rely on the private health insurance that's provided by their employer. Which clearly based on how private insurance works is nowhere near as good as a single payer healthcare plan would be. So that's 100% right with one caveat. I mean that caveat is really important and we get to it in a second. But so following up on what Anna is saying, so those unionized workers, you are still better off under single payer. That's that's absolutely true and I'm glad she clarified that. But the argument, the public argument that we negotiated for rates for a system that is not as good as single payer, but better than everyone else in this brutal system is not a winning argument. That's an argument saying I'm a slightly above you on the totem pole and I wanna make sure that I stay that way. And and, and it, that's a terrible argument. Second terrible part of their public argument is, well, we already negotiated that. Um, then why don't now if we have single payer healthcare, you know what you would get to do? You would get to negotiate again and this time argue for higher wages. 100%. In <laughs> fact, it would be way easier to negotiate higher wages under a single payer healthcare system because workers are not tethered to their job based on health insurance benefits. I mean, how many people want to leave, they want upward mobility, but they feel like, hey, I can't leave as a result of this healthcare system. I can't lose the healthcare coverage. And you would, not only would you have healthcare for your workers, you would get to argue for higher wages, but you also gain leverage because they can leave as Anna pointed out, right? So why would you make such a terrible argument in, in public? Because there's an even worse reason why they're actually against it. Because some of the unions have insurance that they are providing, not the employers. And that's what helps hook people into unions, because they are generally speaking good healthcare, right? Um, so they think, well, then they might not want to join a union if they already have completely free healthcare that gets rid of the need to use our pretty good healthcare at the union. Oh, that no, you cannot do that, man. That's in the union self interest, but that's not in the union members self interest. That's not in the workers interest. It is brazenly corrupt, brazenly corrupt. We want to support the teachers so bad that we supported every teacher strike here and they desperately needed those raises. And here comes their leadership in their unions saying we don't want people to get health care because of our greed. It's unconscionable and and you really got to give credit to and support excellent journalists like David Sirota. And Julia are, Rock who wrote this story yeah, in the Daily Poster. Yeah, David started the Daily Poster and Julia wrote that story. And, and there's others like Ryan Grimm, etc. who are progressive journalists who are unafraid to call out anybody no matter what side they're on. And that is very rare. So understand that in New York, if you don't have single payer health care, it was both corporations, corrupt Democrats, and yes, unfortunately, some of the unions who screwed you here. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, we really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that. All you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.